evening. As we survey the readings of the week, uh, of this weekend, we find uh, some two themes that are coming forth very, very clearly. The first one we find in the Gospel reading, which really points to who Jesus is. And we find that in the context of the manifestation of the authority that Jesus has. Uh, we already know from the other parts of the scriptures that Jesus has authority over nature, right? He commands the water to be still and the wind to be silent. Uh, he, he talks to the, to the tree and commands it to wither and then it withers. I mean, there, there's some many ways that it's manifested in the scriptures. He walks on water. I mean, if, if you want to know someone's authority, let them that person walk on water. You know, then we'll know who is the real authority. Jesus is the authority. Walks on water, right? And then also um, in his public ministry, we see the other manifestation of his of his authority in his power to heal. In the in the healing ability of Jesus, we see that he's able to command the human body to be healed of all kinds of different infirmities, from uh, giving sight to the blind, or making the lame walk, or the deaf hear, and all kinds of things, to the point of even commanding the dead to come back to life. That's a manifestation of the authority of Jesus. In the Gospel reading today, you hear a different level of authority that he's manifesting, and the people immediately recognize it. They say, this man speaks with authority. Very, very important. Because in all of the, the, the history of Israel, all they have been encountering are prophets. From the time of the, the beginnings of the covenant, as the prophets come about, came about, together with the times of the, of the kings, the rulers of Israel, there was always these prophets. There, were, there was these prophets that spoke in the name of God. And there, they were listened to. Because they knew, people knew that they were speaking on behalf of God. But their authority was not theirs. And that is why the, the prophets of Israel already, always spoke this way. Listen, ye people of Israel, your God says. They always spoke in that manner. Jesus, in many areas of the scripture, he did not spoke quoting what God said. He never spoke on behalf of God. He always spoke as God. That's why when you hear him, he would say, Amen, Amen, I say to you. Uh, that's a big distinction between the prophets and Jesus. And that is why a lot of people were confused. Who is this? Who is this who speaks with authority from the core of his being? Who is this? And of course, here we, we, we see another manifestation that the, that the voice of God is able to command uh, the evil, the evil spirits, the unclean spirits, to, be set, to, to set a human person free. And they say, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know you are the Holy One of God. I mean, if there's what other display of authority are you going to be looking for? <laughs> okay, that's clear. That's the one deal in this whole thing that's very, very clear. That Jesus has the authority. God has the authority. The second part is where it gets a little bit kind of gray and crazy. The second part of our readings today that I think is being emphasized is the response of all of us. It comes in the form of a gesture, and the gesture is called listening. Listening. I have found in my dealings with people that this is probably the area of struggle for most people. It's easier to talk, it's harder to listen. All right. <laughs> right? Very good. Thank you, Steve. For that affirmation. For that affirmation of my observation. Um, a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times, it's easier to um, to be the one to command someone 
it's harder to listen and obey someone else. I don't know what it is about us sometimes. But um, church, did you know that in our ability to communicate, in the ability of a human person to communicate, the very first skill that we have to develop is the skill of listening? You could not have been able to speak a word if you did not hear that word said. We are immersed in a world of words and sounds, of meaningful expression. And we are, we are immersed in that from the very beginning and we are always, we imbibe all the many, many words and meanings that, that are given to us in which we are, we are immersed. And from that begins knowledge. And so if we are able to speak something, it is most likely because we have either heard it or read it. Either way, we begin, we began by receiving. I have found uh, in my one-on-one -on -one kind of dealings with people, in fact, and in the context of spiritual direction, that the, the undertone, the undertone of listening is listening presupposes a certain acknowledgement of the authority of the one who speaks. When you are listening, you have to disempower yourself. When you're listening, you have to be passive, be well, active listening, but I'm saying you, you have to be the one to open up and you have to be the one to receive and you have to be the one to be attentive. And you have to give the other person, or God, or the other, uh, the opportunity to be recognized in the moment. That is why for me, I, you know, when I'm, when I'm listening to someone, I know, if the, when I'm talking to someone, I know if that person is actually listening or not. Because sometimes there are people that when they listen, when they try to listen to you, they're already constructing in their head their response to you. That's bad listening. Um, sometimes, especially when we are kind of arguing about something, when you're trying to resolve something, but you have the, the, the one person is still talking and you're still already saying, but, 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 but. <laughs> and you're not able to listen to that person because you have already blocked that person's, the person's input by already constructing your response in your head. It is not an easy thing to do, you know, to listen. But it is important. And that is why in the first reading today, we hear a very beautiful exhortation of listening. Um, it says, uh, where is, where is that? first reading today, from uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. To him. You shall listen. Uh, and, and, and of course we know in the story of Israel how many people also did not listen. I mean they did not even listen to the authority of Moses. When we don't listen, um, it is actually a sin of pride, correct? It is a sin of pride because you are not able to get, get rid of putting yourself first. And, sin, and, and that's a sin. When you, are, when you are not able to put yourself second to the, to the person that you need to listen to, uh, then, then that, that's, there's an issue. Relationships are never formed that way. And that is why, you know, husbands and wives, um, and may I say especially husbands, um, it is important that you listen to your wives. I hear a lot of complaints from wives. My husband doesn't listen to me. His mind is glued on the television to watch football. And I'm yet, uh, but women, ladies, uh, wives, uh, don't, I, I think, I think it sometimes we expect too much, almost sometimes inhuman, uh, from our, from our husbands. Um, so, <laughs> I see smile from the husbands. I like this. Both won today, right? But, but at the same time, you have to balance that, that to also empower your husband, to also empower the other, okay? with um, being, gi giving that person the chance to, to actually absorb what was, what was said before you go again. The problem sometimes, and I see this in my own family system, is sometimes um, one goes rapidly attacking a word, like 
you should do this. And that person is like, uh-huh, still thinking. And, like, and also you should do this. Uh, uh-huh, now two. Oh, and also you should also do this thing. Uh, now three. And sometimes for people like me uh, or some others, maybe we need to take like one thing at a time. And so it's, it's really about the communication. It's really about being able to, um, to know the dynamic of the listening or the giving and the receiving. And, and it's important because it's only that way that we form relationships. God, um, God really says it in many, in many parts of the scripture. In fact, perhaps the best way to listen to God um, is in the context of our own silence. And today, that's one of the biggest problems. Is a lot of people don't know how to be silent. There's so many voices out there in the world today. And we fill ourselves with all kinds of sounds of different kinds. If it be Eminem or Justin Bieber or uh, what's, what's the name of that girl? I was very popular. Forgot. Okay. So um, we can fill our, our minds with ideas from that. If you were watching television, listen, for example, to the women who talk in The View. Is it still, is it still, is it still television? The View or uh, one of those commentary shows. Or maybe even Fox. Sometimes they have some of this, this public forum and like, Nobody's listening to one another, just attacking each other, and there's no communication going on, and you just want to turn on the television. There's so many words and messages that come around. That is why it is important that we know where the authority is. One skill that goes with listening is not to just listen to anything, but to listen discerningly. Is this something worth listening? Or is this, am I listening to this and giving it value? Or should I just listen somewhere else? That, that, to me, that is, that is a key to proper listening. And when we know the voice of God, for the people who are able to make the, to discern the voice of God, then, then they learn more and they build relationships better. But it never happens easily. It requires a prayerful attention. And that is why together as one, in, in the context of our Mass, I mean, when you're listening to Father Sonny, I sure hope that you are not just listening to me because you like me, or because you know that I'm going to be calling you out if, you don't, if, if you're not listening. But that I hope that when, 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 when we are at Mass, and we have all these different ways by which God's, God speaks to us in word, in sacrament, in, 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 uh, in music, right? In music, if today you hear his voice, right? Uh, Heart and not your hearts, that's the song. In, in sound, or maybe even in the gathering of the people, there is some, some, some message that happens to us along the way. May we have the ability to discern well and to be attentive to, the, to those ways that God um, passes on his divine message to all of us. And so for all of us disciples, may our attention and may our disposition always to begin with proper listening to the language of the Lord, because He is the final authority over everything, including our life. Amen.